the thing we're going to talk about, the chase carving. Chase carving is just where you're taking this. It's a simple carving where you're just taking a, a few chips off. So this is an example, and we're going to be carving some of this tonight here. But that's a simple chase carving that right now is just a drawing. You're going to see this kind of carving on Amish furniture and furniture that's very simple. They don't want the elaborate carvings on it. That's one form of chase carving that's pretty popular. Other types of chase carving that I like to do is like pictures. The only thing you're doing is just taking the line you're just carving the lines and you're keeping that flat look on it. So that kind of makes a nice little wall hanging and something a little subtle in the background. Here's just another example of a chase carving. It really has almost the effect of a burning, but it will last a lot longer than a burning. And it just has some, because the grain showing and it just has a real feel to it. But these are very fast to do. It's just, you're cutting away just the line and you're leaving the rest just flat. On this, I stained it. And then after I stained it, then I sanded the surface off. To keep the stain from penetrating, I used a little bit of varnish in the stain. I raised the viscosity of the stain so it wouldn't soak really far into the wood. Then I put the stain on, then I sanded it off with a belt sander and just put the varnish over the top of that. So that's kind of how I got the lines to appear. In this simple chase carving design, the bottom one, a little larger, we're using the veiner. The top one is a little smaller, and we're going to be using the V-tool. Just pushing the V-tool right down the center of the line. and just blend your cuts in. For the larger design, we're using the veiner. The veiner is a little wider and is a little softer because it has the curve at the bottom rather than the sharp point. So just follow each of the curves around, still with the pencil being in the center of the line. Keeping the pencil line in the center of the veiner, just follow the curve around. Because we're working with the grain going along, we have to do an end cut so we don't split out the end. You use the same tool through the whole carving. And as you can see, it goes pretty quickly. So this is a nice way to do a nice design. What I'd like to do here is stop on this demonstration and uh, do a picture. For this carving, I would like the lines to be a little sharper. So I'm going to use a V-tool on it. And we're going to carve it the same way, following the pencil line right in the center of the tool. The grain here is running in the vertical direction. So we need to be a little careful about splitting out in that direction.
with the grain running vertical, you have to be careful. So right about here, you should stop, reverse direction, and come from the other side. Otherwise, that chip is going to go up into the hand. You're treating every line the same. So there you're going to make the stop cut so that chip doesn't go on. So this is a very good exercise in making stop cuts for any kind of carving. It's also a very nice gift. So something like this is very quick and easy to make a gift. So when I do the finish on this, I am going to mix a little varnish in my stain, and that's going to keep the stain from soaking into the wood. It'll change it from a dye stain to a pigment stain, and it won't penetrate very far. So then I can sand the surface, and I can lighten up the top and keep that darker stain down into the lines. What I will also do is take a little colored pencil uh, before I put the second coat of clear varnish on and I am going to rub it down into the lines. The color that I'm going to be used is just a little darker shade of the varnish. And so this is going to get one coat of stain that has varnish in and it'll have a coat of uh, clear varnish over it. In this chase carving, we have long continuous lines. In other chase carvings, we have short lines. That just gives you a total different feel. In the cat, I wanted a little smoother look, so I put shorter lines that are closer together. And in the donkey, we have kind of a chaotic look. In this one, we have the continuous line. So you can create any mood that you want by the quality of the line that you carve into it. Treating every line the same, you just continue carving until you've carved all your lines. And just a little light sanding and finishing. And I explained how to do the finish.